We're doing a little bit of an install series here, some of these B&M fabrication products. They make some really nice quality stuff. You're gonna love this if you see it in person. It's almost like a little piece of jewelry. Uh, they can uh, powder coat these in any color or coat them in just about anything you want. The welds on them, well, they're amazing. And we like to use their products. These are the burly boards for the Axis chassis. We're gonna install them. And the reason why we're sort of changing things up is, well, maybe it's a better mousetrap kind of thing, I don't know. But um, number one, this hoop here, that busts your ankle. Your boot gets caught between there and then if you fall off the side of the sled or get bucked off forward, you have a tendency to rack your ankle and you can, people have hurt themselves pretty badly. As well, these, these boards are great. There's lots of traction on them, but all my pants on all my gear are ripped up because of these things. And I always wear shin pads, but the guys who don't, uh, there are some out there, they get put right out of the season because of these, they're so serrated. They rip you right off. Um, I also believe that with these round bars, they do clear snow a little better. Is there a weight difference? Yeah, these may weigh a couple ounces more, but I think we're gonna be okay with that. We've got a lot of power in this sled and it's gonna be just fine. Like I said, they come in any color to match your sled, just about any color of the rainbow. B&M, b, &M, b &M Fab, uh, you know, they work with everybody to make sure they get the product you want. So we're gonna install these. They also come with little um, screws, I forget what you call them, but they just offer more traction. We're gonna drill and put those in as well. I don't expect this to be a very difficult uh, installation. One thing you have to do is you have to remove this bolt, which is on the top side of the tunnel. So we're just gonna drop our suspension and the track a little bit by the use of a, an engine hoist. We use it all the time and it's not, I mean, putting these suspensions in, in and out, just you know, lifting them up, moving them around, not very hard, not like the old days where you'd be racking your back and uh, don't be intimidated by it. If we can do it, anybody can do it. And it's gonna look good. I decided to put these little gold screws in, these traction points on here, uh, just to start. I'm playing around, just getting the feel of this one. Um, pretty easy to do. All you do is you grab your tape measure and they're basically spaced two and a half inches apart, each one. And then pretty much, you know, you just figure out where you want them in the middle of all these uh, little diagonal members or cross members. You just make yourself a, a straight line and mark it with one of these little pens here. Use your punch, your handy punch. Do that. To drill your holes. One thing they say about these burly boards, I mean, they just call them, I think they're just calling them uh, uh, Polaris running boards now. But. We'll call them burly boards because they look pretty burly. They're supposed to offer a lot more rigidity like these things. There's no flex or twist in these. They're just solid compared to the other ones. You can move them a little bit. So they might stiffen up your chassis a little bit. Chassis flex, keep that out of there. Good. Wrap these in. These are just aluminum boards. Do the trick, nice and light, very strong. Airplanes made out of aluminum for decades. Strong stuff, strong and light and inexpensive. Relatively. Look at that, that is blingy, nice. Now, we are going to drop the suspension because we need to get in, well first I'll drill out all these rivets, but then I need to drop the suspension so I can get in at this, this little bolt here because 
as you can see, this hoop is threaded. So you have to thread the bolt in from the back side of that. That's the trickiest part to get to. But hey, we can do that. It's not going to be that difficult. start to spin, just grab yourself a pair of ice grips. Oh, that's the inside one. I just do one of those. Sort of move the bit around a little bit. And you can just run in here and punch those out. Some of these rivets go right into the skid mount. carriage bolt on the far side of that. I think my tunnel's a little tweaky. You are going to need some kind of a hoist to lift up this sled, a hoist or whatever it is. You put something under the back bumper probably. Get one of your, one of your strong friends to hold it. You're going to want to pop off your side panel. There are just those quick clips that come out of here. Drops that down. These are really flexible. Good time to get all the branches and stuff out of here. Can't believe that belt has lasted that long. With that turbo and all that heat there. But we have made our way into this. These last two little bolts here with carriage bolts need to come out. And we're gonna cut these off, clean that up. This is going faster than I thought. Now don't worry about cutting up your axis. We do it all the time. Get over there. Come on, come on. Get Sticky stuff, man, not aluminum. Come on, I heard that. Come on then. Oh yeah. There we go. Come on, you can do that. Hey, <laughs> look at that. That looks good. Yeah, I just want to clean that up, you know, so it looks good. And you can always take a deburring tool as well if you don't like your edges. I'm just using this little wrench, it's just aluminum. And when you take the sharp edges off the aluminum, it keeps it, or it helps it from splitting. It, keep, it helps it from splitting, is what I'm trying to say. It helps it keep from splitting. Does that sound better? Uh, when I'm popping out suspensions, I usually start at the back and I usually use an air gun. If you try to do it with a, a wrench, um, it, this doesn't get that brap that you need, doesn't get that, uh, that ratcheting. Um, most often the, the uh, shaft will start to spin in there if it's an older sled. <coughs> we'll see what happens. I can tell it's spinning on the other side. This one might have, no, here, see, I'm not taking that one out all the way. Because if one comes out, you get it out, and then you don't get the other one out, and you can't hold it. So is that one. Beauty. Sticky. I'll wrap it in and out a couple times. Oh, now we're out. 
hopefully this one will just spin, not the shaft. It's kind of the way we wanted it to go down. Now, it doesn't usually go that well on your 1989 Polaris wedge chassis. So I forgot to do something, or I did something wrong. So we're gonna fix it. I shouldn't have cut it there. I needed to cut it here. It just gets in the way. No problem, we can do that. Might not be the prettiest thing here now. I'll polish that up. Take the rough edges off it. I have to do that here too. This is what we're dealing with. So that comes from the inside of the tunnel out. This is marked with a top because there's a little bevel in the uh, tunnel. So we want to punch this out. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to thread our own bolt into the board. These ones off too. Yeah, One of those. Could have used a little smaller one. That worked just fine, actually. Okay, now they have supplied all the hardware. Make sure no hardware goes down your tunnel underneath your gas tank, boys. Because then you're gonna have a bad day when you have a hole in your tank. I don't know why they didn't seal that up at the back. Not that smart. I'm passing that through right there. See that? Yep. That's gonna go in here. Yeah, there are only two rivets that go into this from the bottom, just these two points here. I shouldn't have taken that rivet out right there. I'm gonna re-hammer one of those back in. But just about a go. So I'm gonna uh, also, I used a ratchet on the uh, upper bolt here, just because it's way easier. But. I'm just finishing tightening it by hand. Because uh, it's just in aluminum, so you don't want to crank it too hard, right? Now, when I was grinding this here, I sort of took the powder coat off this uh, back grab bar. I just put some black magic marker on it. I don't have any orange, but I think we're going to be okay. I don't think anybody's gonna notice that too much. But I just know some of you guys would be like, oh my God. Some people care a lot about their sleds. I do too. I care that they uh, run well and that they do what I want them to do. Not so much about the, how it looks. Now they give you some long rivets and some short rivets. When you're going through just this one piece of uh, aluminum, you use a short one. When you're going through these two pieces, you use a long one. Makes sense, right? There we go. Oh, we just need to hammer in that belly pan. That's the one there, isn't it? Look at yep. you. Oh, shit balls. Let's 
see how much of this I can get done before I need to get another set of hands in here. I'll, I'll just reset it. Run it up a little bit. Just line right up, man. Watch. Just watch and see, Simon. How's that? Fell in behind something. Try pulling it back. That side is just lightly threaded. I've wrapped them off with the air gun, but when you're really starting these, don't wrap them in until you're really sure you've got them in because you'll cross thread the shaft and then it's just too much of a nightmare. You know, when you come in and uh, touch any of these suspension bolts, make sure you torque them up to factory spec. Every sled's different. Um, I gotta find out what the torques are, the torque specs are on this and I'm gonna do it because I've had a lot of these fall out. I think Simon, you've been on a few rides with... Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, it just ruins your day, man. And they just fall out. And you'd think you'd notice them, but nope. I guess that, you know, a pre-trip pre -trip inspection is good, but when you're back in the middle of nowhere for three or four days, and the sled's covered in ice and snow, and it's dark and who knows what's going on, stuff goes down. It's the way it is. It's the way it goes. That's the kind of thing that are not fun to do in the backcountry. This is never good in the backcountry. Usually minus 30. And uh, yeah, never fun. Yep. actually feel more rigid. Is that possible? The other ones do did have some sort of a little bit of wonky flex to them. Uh, that doesn't you know I don't want to see way more room in here now. Nice. Those are the Polaris running boards from BM Fabrications. I gotta thank them. They were, you know, they, con they contacted me. They saw this right here. Come take a look. They sent me this a couple of years, well, uh, the year I got this. What is this, is 16? Yeah. We'll get it in the fall of, uh, fall of 15? Yeah, fall of 15, right? Makes sense? I think it's, yeah, because I, I had it for, yeah, 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 that's right. Anyway, they sent me this. And then they saw that in the video. They're like, oh my God, that's our old powder coating process. So they sent us a new one. We're gonna install that as well. Um, but I tag trees. I can't believe that I haven't dented this thing. Man, I'm hard on that. I've nailed a lot of stuff. What's this? What is that? Is that a mouse? No, it's a cattail. They're all over the place. <laughs> Oh yeah, you rubbed a lot of stuff with this. Oh yeah. Oh, I've dented, oh, I've dented it, eh? Look at that. Look at I've dented it. Knocked the paint right off it. Anyway, so they've got this new powder coating process. And they assure me that there's not going to be an issue with it. But, you know, I have to appreciate that they're looking out for us. And they're saying, you know, we'll get you a new product if we make a mistake. So that's going to go on a little later. Uh, I believe I did an install video for that, but if I didn't, I will do one for this. The thing I like about their front bumper is that it actually goes down and it attaches to the pan. Most of them don't. Some of them just kind of go down and attach to the plastic, or some of them don't do anything. They really don't go anywhere. 
so you can smash up the bottom of your sled. And they have this cross member here as well, more rigidity. It's groovy. B&M Fabrications, I will add their link to this video and you can go check them out and tell them Louis sent you, right? She's looking good, looking real good. Right on. Just in time for riding. We'll see you at the